What I'd like to start with is, and with you, Lisa, what's one of the coolest things? I mean, what's one of the things that you tell people when they ask about how the brain works and what you've learned about it? What's one of the things you say, yeah, this is how cool the brain is? I love that we're even speaking this because when I went into neuroscience, I mean, I'm 45, so I've been studying this since I was 18. It wasn't really cool. It was, you know, I was such a nerd and now I'm cool. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, it's like, I was always interested in biology and how we work. I mean, we're, as human beings, it's amazing that this machine works. But, you know, the heart's a pump, the kidney's a filter, the brain. I mean, here's where, you know, we perceive things, we think. It's the only organ that can think about itself. I mean, ah! So, I mean, <laughs> this is where you desire. This is where your personality, you remember, you talk, you walk, you move, all of that happens in your brain. So, I'm amazed by that. That is, it is pretty amazing. How about you, Susan? What's something that amazes you about the brain? Oh my gosh, I mean, there's so many things. I'll, I'll just tell you about one thing that I like thinking about. I find it really fascinating. I don't know if it's the most amazing thing, but um, the idea that when people dissent from group opinion, when they have their own independent thought that's different from that of the group, that the brain registers that in the amygdala, which is a small uh, organ inside the brain, and that that is registered as a kind of pain. Um, so neuroscientists sometimes call it the pain of independence. And I find that fascinating just in terms of understanding what can sometimes go right and go wrong in group dynamics and how hard it is sometimes for people to speak their own truth. You're gonna get me to talk about the Republican debate again, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe later. How about you, Dacker? How, what is something you tell people, the most fascinating thing, or one of the most fascinating things about the brain you study? Well, I think what's astounding is uh, how much the brain has been designed to care about other people. Um, you know, we lost sight of that in thinking about the evolution of the brain, and, you know, one example of that is this tiny little peptide called oxytocin, which floats in your brain and then goes through your bloodstream to your organs. Many women know this because it's involved in milk letdown and uterine contractions in childbirth and when the mom looks at the little baby and it's covered in fluids and it's like that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Oxytocin is tricking her into doing the dirty work of that but it and now we're learning from neuroscience that when I have a little oxytocin surging through my bloodstream I'm more cooperative and empathetic and sharing and the like and that astounds me that in hundreds of millions of years of evolution we have a chemical that makes us kind and generous in our nervous system.